Are you a triathlete struggling to squeeze in training amid a jam-packed schedule? Have you ever wondered how to maximize the efficiency of your limited training time? Or are you curious about strategies to balance work, life, and your passion for triathlon? Then this episode is a must-listen. We're delving deep into the world of triathlon training for time-crunched athletes. So buckle up and let's get started on this journey of time mastery and triathlon training. Listen in for episode 31 of the official triathlete podcast. Hey, my friend, my name is Danita Jacobs. Some people know me as a nurse, a leader, and health expert. Other people know me as a coach, race official, and seasoned triathlete. But at the end of the day, I'm simply a friend with a mission. I want to help you transform your life. My goal isn't to help millions. My goal is to help you. Welcome to the official triathlete podcast, where you will learn about all things multi-sport, broken down into bite-sized pieces, and how we can blend life demands with fitness goals. My approach is different because I am blending my 20 plus years of healthcare and athletic experience to help you be the healthiest, happiest, and most balanced athlete you can be. I believe in you, even if you don't. You really can reach those soaring goals and I'm here to help you get there. I'm so glad you made it here. If you have a question or topic idea, get in touch and let me know. After all, this show is for you. Enjoy. Hello, my friends and fellow athletes. Thanks for tuning in. I'm so grateful that you are here. Okay, my fellow time crunched athlete, before we get to tips on maximizing your performance with limited time, I always start with a little message from my Train with Heart program. It's my mission to transform the whole athlete. So heart not only develops and prepares the body for improved athletic performance, but aims to optimize the whole person through healing, empowerment, awareness, reflection, and transformation. So each episode, I share a little snippet from how I help my athletes with one of these elements. Today, we are going to discuss healing. We're delving into a deeply important aspect of sport that often gets overlooked. The focus of our conversation is mental healing in sports. We push our bodies to the limit in sports, striving for the new personal record or conquering a distance we never thought we could. But sometimes the stress we put on our physical bodies pales in comparison to the stress we put on our minds. What happens when our spirit isn't keeping pace with our physical capabilities? Just like our bodies, our minds can experience fatigue, injury, and require time to heal. Mental healing, or as some refer to it, psychological recovery, is just as critical in sports as treating a pulled hamstring or a sprained ankle. It's about understanding that our minds need rest, recuperation, and deliberate attention, not just when there's a significant issue, but as a regular part of our training routine. Mental healing in sports isn't merely about managing the stress of competition or overcoming a challenging defeat. It's about addressing anxiety, depression, burnout, and other mental health challenges that can be both a cause and a consequence of physical training. Let's dive into how we can recognize the signs of mental fatigue and strain the strategies for promoting mental healing, and the role that a supportive community can play in this process. Recognizing mental fatigue and strain isn't always as straightforward as a physical injury. Symptoms can be subtle, gradual, and often mistaken for mere effects of physical exhaustion. This can include persistent feelings of dread or anxiety, lack of motivation, consistent irritability, difficulty concentrating, and disrupted sleep patterns. Athletes may also experience an unusual decline in performance that doesn't improve with rest. For those who are keenly aware of their bodies through constant training, it's about translating that same level of awareness to our minds. Asking ourselves how we're feeling mentally should become a habit, as commonplace as checking our running form or stroke technique. As for strategies for promoting mental healing, These range from professional therapeutic support like counseling or sports psychology to mindfulness and meditation practices. Intentional periods of mental rest should also be included in training regimens. This could be as simple as taking time each day to unwind and disconnect or incorporating mental health days into your schedule. The role of nutrition in mental health should not be underestimated. A well-balanced diet not only supports physical performance, but also plays a significant part in mental well-being. Similarly, maintaining a regular sleep schedule helps keep our minds sharp and focused. The importance of a supportive community cannot be overstated. The pressure of competition can create feelings of isolation, and a solid support system helps mitigate this. It's about cultivating a sports culture that values mental health, where discussing psychological struggles is normalized and encouraged. 
Teammates, coaches, friends, and family play an essential role in both recognizing the signs of mental strain in their athletes and supporting them through the healing process. For athletes, remember, reaching out for support is not a sign of weakness, but a testament to your strength. You are not alone in this journey. Reach out, speak up, and let's ensure that the path to becoming a better athlete is also the path to becoming a mentally healthier individual. The sport isn't just about stronger bodies, it's about healthier minds, and by acknowledging and addressing mental strain, we're taking a significant stride towards that goal. Mental healing is a fundamental part of being a resilient, well-rounded athlete. By recognizing the importance of mental healing, we're not just promoting better performance, but better well-being for everyone involved in sports. Today, I want to talk about something we all struggle with finding the perfect balance between our passion for triathlon and the demands of everyday life. Work, family, and other commitments can make it difficult to train. As triathletes, we know that dedication and consistency in training are vital, but life is multifaceted and we can't neglect our other responsibilities. So how can we strike that perfect balance? It's all about being smart with your time and priorities. Here are some tips to help you master the juggling act. Number one, set clear goals and expectations. First and foremost, set clear and realistic goals and expectations for your triathlon training and your personal life. Having a well-defined vision will keep you focused and motivated to manage both aspects effectively. This could involve setting specific targets for your training, like achieving a certain swim or run time, as well as outlining personal goals, such as spending quality time with family or excelling in your career. Remember, these goals should be achievable and specific to your unique circumstances. Once you have your goals, you can develop strategies to achieve them without neglecting any area of your life. Too often, we overwhelm ourselves with long-term goals. When overwhelmed, sometimes we give up before we've even started. Be sure to break those large goals into more manageable goals and focus on short-term objectives. When we have small wins along the way, it is easier to stay motivated while building momentum toward those larger goals. Be sure to set realistic goals that are in line with your strengths and weaknesses while keeping time availability in mind. Are you a strong swimmer, but you're not a strong runner? Maybe you set your goal on improving running and just keep your swimming up to par. Time-crunched athletes have clear expectations on what they want to accomplish and are capable of actually doing. What does your schedule really allow? You can still be a successful athlete, but be honest about your limitations. Do you only have six hours per week to train? you may need to focus on shorter distance events since they rely more on high intensity workouts versus a deep aerobic base that you would achieve from high volume workouts. Just because you don't have a lot of time to train doesn't mean that you won't be successful or that you are not passionate and committed to the sport. Just align your training capabilities with your goals, embrace your availability and do the best you can with what you have. Number two, plan and schedule. Planning is the key to success. Time management is crucial when balancing different commitments. Use a digital calendar, a planner, or a project management tool to map out your days, weeks, and months. Dedicate specific time slots for training, work, family, and personal time. This will not only ensure that you stay organized, but it also helps prevent overtraining or neglecting your personal life. It's essential to remember that plans may change, so make sure your schedule has some flexibility. By creating a structured routine, you'll avoid conflicts and ensure you have enough time for everything. A routine definitely helps with this. Maybe you swim on Mondays and Wednesdays, bike Thursdays and Saturdays, and run Tuesdays and Fridays. When planning, aim for consistency. Perhaps even more important than the specifics of each workout session, consistency will make you progress more than if you have too long of recovery periods. There is an overload recovery balance that is important to maintain and progress with fitness. Have you heard the term weekend warrior? Rather than working out hardcore on the weekends only, it is better to plan for smaller chunks most days of the week. Aim for at least four workouts per week with no more than two days of rest and recovery between workouts. Number three, include your family and friends. Your triathlon journey doesn't have to be a solo endeavor. Share your goals and experiences with your loved ones. Engage them in conversations about your training and races. Maybe even invite them to join you for a workout or to cheer you on at an event. This way you create a support system that will motivate you. And at the same time, you involve your loved ones in your passion, allowing them to better understand and support your triathlon journey. 
Number four, efficient workouts. Time is precious, so make the most of your workouts. You may not always have hours to dedicate to training, so it's important to maximize the time you do have. High-intensity interval training is a great way to get the most out of your workouts in a shorter amount of time. Combining disciplines such as brick workouts, which is usually a bike ride followed by a run, can also save time and simulate race conditions. Think about your training workload as volume times intensity equals workload. So if you are time crunched, the way to increase your training workload is to increase the intensity of your workouts. If you only have 45 minutes, rather than doing your workout at a steady state, add intervals to increase the workload. Remember that the quality of your training is more important than the quantity. Quality, of course, means finding ways to get the most out of every second of your workout. Make sure your workout session is safe, effective, and efficient. Here are some key sessions to incorporate into your training plan. Speed sessions. The purpose of speed sessions is to increase speed over a given distance. Strength and mobility training. This helps to develop and strengthen muscles while improving mobility. And steady state workouts, which are meant to build endurance. Number five, rest and recovery. Recovery techniques should not be overlooked. Utilizing rest and recovery allows athletes to maximize their training while giving the athlete time to focus on their aspects of life. Utilizing rest and recovery allows athletes to maximize their training while giving the athlete time to focus on other aspects of their life. Rest and recovery allows the athlete to heal, avoid overtraining, and reduce fatigue. Rest and recovery include proper nutrition and hydration, as well as recovery techniques like foam rolling, stretching, massages, compression gear, and those well-deserved rest days. You can refer back to episode 23 for more information on nutrition and hydration for the triathlete. Foam rolling helps to reduce soreness and muscle tension while loosening any knots and improving circulation. Incorporating stretching also reduces muscle soreness while improving mobility. Massage therapy improves blood flow, reduces inflammation, decreases muscle soreness, and reduces fatigue. And compression gear also increases blood flow, reduces soreness, and speeds up recovery. Number six, flexibility and forgiveness. Be flexible and forgiving of yourself. Life can be unpredictable, and some days you might not achieve everything you planned. That's okay. Avoid self-criticism and adapt when you need to. Despite all your planning and organization, there will be days when life throws you a curveball and you're unable to stick to your schedule. In these moments, it's crucial to be flexible and adapt. If a meeting runs late and you miss a workout, adjust your schedule or modify your workout instead of skipping it entirely. And most importantly, forgive yourself. Balancing triathlon training with everyday life is a journey, not a destination. Consistency over time is what matters, so don't let a few hiccups along the way discourage you. Do what you can, even if it is a diluted version of what you had planned. Not every session will be perfect. You will improve by trying to get things done, but beating yourself up for what you didn't get done won't help. Now, balancing triathlon training with everyday life is a challenge, but it's entirely possible with the right mindset and strategies. Remember, with determination, creativity, and the right strategies, you can conquer your busy schedule and excel in your triathlon journey. All right, my friend, if you need help figuring out how to fit in training into your busy life for your next event, get in touch. I would love to help. I've helped plenty of others reach their goals with limited time to train. I promise it can be done. Been there and done that myself. Head over to trynursecoaching.com and sign up for a free 30-minute goal-setting session and get yourself one step closer to crossing that finish line and feeling absolutely amazing and proud of yourself. There's nothing like it. Now, I'm excited to bring you our next podcast episode that delves into a hot topic, literally. I'm going to talk about training and racing in the heat, providing essential tips and strategies to beat the summer blaze without compromising your performance. If you've ever struggled with maintaining your pace in high temperatures or wondered how to adapt your hydration and nutrition for sweltering conditions, then this episode is just for you. Don't miss it. Together, we'll turn the heat into your secret weapon for success. Talk to you then. Bye. That's all for now. Thanks for tuning in. I want to get to know you, so head over to trynursecoaching.com and sign up for a free 30-minute goal-setting session. Love the show? I'd be forever grateful if you left a review and shared the podcast with your friends. And remember, do things that are hard. <laughs>